Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a disqualification at GP Houston and this comes from the original poster, the person who was disqualified. If true, this is probably one of the worst disqualifications I've heard of. So I'm just going to read it to you, leave your opinions below and let me know what you think. I just wanted to hear, so on Sunday evening, my opponent and I were in the situation of a potential chance of getting into the top 8 if we won our last match in round 15. Upon arriving to my table, my opponent offered me to concede as a joke. I chuckled and gave a reply of no. We continued to talk before the round started and he seemed like a pretty laid back and funny guy. We continued to talk and then he lightheartedly stated to me, dude, I would so pay you to be in the top eight. Oops, I can't say that. Sorry, just kidding. At the time, I didn't really give much thought to it and truly believed he was joking around. Taking his social quest, I chose to brush off what he said. I continued to shuffle my deck and play the match against him. I ended up beating my opponent 2-0 after him mulling down to five both games. Being ecstatic about my win, I ran to my friends and celebrated my victory. 20 minutes later, the head judge pulled me to the side and asked some questions about my last opponent. Now, what are these questions about? Well, a floor judge had heard our conversation and reported to the head judge. The ruling that was made was that both of us will be disqualified from the event and received no pricing, which at a minimal would be $1,000 for me and some pro points. They are on the edge of the top eight. And that is pretty crazy that something like this can even happen. My opponent in Fracture was initiating a conversation about bribery, collusion, in regards to the results of a match. My in Fracture that I received was receiving such offers and not calling a judge immediately. I feel though most players would have acted as I have. I actually never, it actually never crossed my mind to call a judge over on my opponent over something that was said by him so lightheartedly. As a person, I am gentle, kind-hearted person and to call a judge over this seemed like it would be overreacting. I couldn't believe at the ruling I couldn't hold back but burst into tears in public. I felt as though I complied with the rules. I find myself questioning why am I getting punished as harshly for a mistake my opponent made? How was I supposed to know that I was supposed to call a judge for a small remark? It's not like I have read the entire judge rules and regulation. So these judges, they really like to trip on power. Uh, essentially, you're not supposed to either accept an offer. I knew that. It's pretty obvious. You're not supposed to accept an offer when someone's like, oh, I'll give you some money if you let me win. That is not good for the game, especially if they're playing for the top eight. People don't want to do that. Splitting and stuff like that has always been a, there's always been a history of that in Magic the Gathering. That's just fact. In the olden days, you could accept offers like that and no one would really care. Maybe it was against regulations, but no one enforced it because no one really cared. Today, I think it's people with a power trip. I don't, I personally, so again, this is, so I read it to you. You can have your opinions. You can leave the comments and I'm not really going to delete too many comments unless it's really offensive. But my personal opinion is when you put people in power, and these people in power have very little training. I mean, what is the training to be a judge? You pass a few tests and there's no ethics. So if you train to be a lawyer from day one, you take these ethics classes, probably doesn't help much to be honest, knowing my uh, friends, right? I'm not gonna call anyone f out in public, but my friends are, they obviously didn't learn very much from the ethics class that we took together. So you take ethics class and before you take the bar exam, you also take ethics test and you have to pass uh, a, you know, a test on ethics. And obviously during the whole time, the courses, it's blah, blah, blah. Don't do this. Don't do this. When do you have to report? 
to your um, the prosecution, when do you have to report something to your judge, and you get a lot of training, but that's three years of law school training, and who knows how many years if you're a litigator or if you're a prosecutor especially, where you do have to disclose certain evidence to your opponent. If you keep that evidence hidden, then actually it's a mistrial and you will probably get disbarred. So back into this, we have a judge, retired judge nonetheless, that sticky did. Abusing sticky privileges, of course you are. Because that's how Reddit works, right? So offering anything to your opponent in exchange for a match result is never allowed. Not the pro tour, not the GP, blah, blah, blah. Since it's an existence issue of the game, judges get absolutely no leeway on this. If a judge finds out you did this, you have to be disqualified from the tournament immediately. A judge is not allowed to let a slide or example why it was bad and just warn you not to do in the future. Yes, even at FNM, yes, at pre-release, we split all the time at pre-release so we can go home before like 7 a.m. I don't, I didn't know that was illegal to split. Um, luckily, we don't have any judges at our pre-releases, so fine. I don't know, this just seems like a power trip to me, in my opinion. Like, it seems like someone wants to feel really important, and this is the way to do it, is to break other people's dreams. It was just a joke, doesn't fly for some, for the, the reasons people have articulated below. It provides a way to attempt a bribe and then walk back if the opponent doesn't accept it. So essentially the judges are saying this is correct and by the letter of the law, it probably is in the rules and restrictions. I'm not going to read that book. So, but I could see a situation where, you know, if I'm playing and I'm playing for the top eight and the guy in front of me is saying, oh, I'm going to bribe you. And I'm just like, oh, are you joking? Yeah, I'm joking. I'm like, all right, cool. And no, I don't accept your bribe. Then I smash face with him. And then I finish 2-0, off to the top eight I go. And then it's like, okay, did you not accept that bribe? And I was like, yes. Okay, did you get a bribe and not report a judge? I would be like, uh, why would I report a judge? I said no to the bribe. I didn't accept it. I won the match. I clearly didn't accept a bribe if I went 2-0 for the match, right? So that's kind of... It's by the letter of the law, I get it. Yes, you don't want people bribing other people. But at the same time, why do we have that role? What is the source of the role and what is it trying to prevent? It's trying to prevent people from bribing other people to lose. In this case, the guy did not accept a bribe and he went to O, probably making the top eight and like you said, having a thousand dollars. And obviously he was so mad or sad that he cried in public, which is quite embarrassing. But I mean, if it was your dream to go to the top eight and then you got to the top eight and you got, you were so excited. And then what, like what just happened? You just got hit by like a Mack truck when the judge comes over and says, do you not accept that bribe? By not accepting that bribe and informing us, the judge community, you have violated policy XXX10. And now you are, you're disqualified and you lose all your money and you're not even part of the turn. Like you lose the ninth place or the 12th place. I mean, it's not even lost a game. It was just gone. So that is a uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, and I can't imagine like doing so well and being so exhausted playing magic, getting to almost to the top eight or close to the top eight and being put in a situation like this, that is insane to me. Um, and obviously he feels very bad. He's crying in public. I don't know, what do you guys think? I, 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 get, I get the point. I get the point is you don't wanna treat people differently and there's no leeway and a bribe is a bribe. A joke, it's not really a joke. So if he was a really smart person or a mean person or a person who knew the rules and regulations, he wouldn't, he would immediately, it would be in his advantage to report the bribe, get the guy disqualified, win the match. Don't play those two games or three games. Don't risk losing, right? He would say, judge, I call a judge. So if he knew that 
by not oh he he knew two things if he knew that a person bribe trying to bribe in a joking way could be disqualified if he was a mean person or very smart person a card shark person he would immediately call a judge that person would be dq'd and off the top eight he goes it would serve no advantage for him not to call a judge at that point now, if he didn't know or he didn't think by turning down a bribe and a, you know, or it was a bribe to begin with and he plays out his matches and he wins, then it probably wasn't that the other guy paid him to win. That's not logical. The guy would have paid him to lose. So if he loses, it gets a little, hmm, what's going on here? But he won. So logically speaking like and there's no scenario i mean the best scenario for him is to call a judge immediately after he gets this bribe dq the other dude make the other deal feel like trash ruin his tournament who's also fighting for a top eight and have no risk of losing i generally feel like that he did not know that was a bribe because if he thought it was a bribe and he knew it was against the rules he gets that guy DQ'd immediately. Why wouldn't he do that? Um, maybe he was confused. Maybe he was tired. Maybe he, he, it was a joke. So if it was a real bribe, then he clearly didn't accept it because he won 2-0. So it's just one of these things that I think gets overblown and the magic judges, like it's, I have an interesting story. I'm going to end with this story. I was a teaching assistant for 14 different classes at NYU. Yes, that is true. And yes, I still hold the record for a teaching assistant as an undergrad. I was an undergrad. I was, I taught my first class at NYU when I was a sophomore to a bunch of juniors. Gosh, what has my life become? I'll give you guys an update on my life. A lot of interesting stuff is happening in my life right now, including me buying back my company, which turns out to be a legal land mime, and, uh, mime, <laughs> Mr. Mime, uh, land mine of all types of bad stuff. Like, oh, your payment processor now has to be changed. Your bank account has to be closed, reopened. You have to pick a different bank now. You have to get investor money again. It's like being a startup but worst. It's like destroying a startup and then creating a new one. But creating a new one's always really fun. The destroying a startup is not fun. The exits are not fun. So anyway, I what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So I'll tell you an interesting story about maybe I'll save it for another time. And this video is already long enough and I wanted you guys to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Bye guys.